tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Farrell's Baby Butt. And they must have listened to a full episode and gone, oh no. He probably would sound like a Ned Flanders. <laughs> oh, notally no. Not for me, neighborino. <laughs> well, little orphan Annie Christ would love. I think she would. A daddy Warbucks. And this is on the war, I guess? This moment right here is when my diet goes out the window for the entire rest of the year, for the holidays it's and so everything. so hard for it not to. You know what's worse than kids <laughs> is ghost kids. Yeah. Those little brats. <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative, Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Welcome new followers, viewers, subscribers, likers, haters, longtime friends, longtime enemies. <laughs> Thanks so much for being Arch here. Arch <laughs> yeah. Do we have any of those? I don't think so. Uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Let the algorithm know that you're into Idaho Falls infotainment, opinion, and juvenile humor. On tonight's episode, uh, oh, why we need a belt route in Idaho Falls. What exactly spoopy season memes <laughs> me means? <laughs> I think memes is memes more appropriate. Mean. Oh, rest in peace, Grizzly number 399. Poor mama. And we're just going to eat candy the entire show. I mean, it is Halloween after all. Plus, another entry into the front row Spud Kings contest with Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company and IFAF. I can't wait to make a new friend. <laughs> it's a little spoopy in here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Spoopy is yeah. a skeleton army. Uh -huh. <laughs> spoopy season. Mm -hmm. If you're not uh, up with the memes, yo... And you're wondering, are those guys trying to say spooky? <laughs> Once upon a time, someone was trying to, and they messed up just enough. Well, I think spooky <laughs> is how the kids say, sort of in between the Gen Zs and the um, Alphas. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in there, somebody wanted to mix spooky and cute. So I think that's what it is. <laughs> so or spooky as far and as funny. I as far as I understand the lore of it, um, it started on Tumblr back in my day, mm -hmm. you know, so it's actually millennials who started Spoopy. This is your era. Yeah, but basically someone misspelled Spooky and people saw it and made a bunch of funny little jokes and added like derpy, spooky things, which is sort of how it, you know. Okay. Well, I would certainly trust your <laughs> recollection of it. Yeah. yeah, but basically that's how it sort of uh, snowballed into what we know and love today as Spoopy. And I, th I think that Spoopy can be um, like a golden retriever with a sheet over it and eyes cut out. Oh, yeah. A little ghost golden retriever <laughs> you know? like that one TikTok meme. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're doing it. Yeah, that's like uh -huh. that's a right. thing specifically this year. Uh-huh. Yes. I actually am really tempted to do that with one of my pets. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the only one who might allow me to is Leo, and he's kind of lazy, so I don't know if I could get a good pose out of him. <laughs> right. He'd be like crashed <laughs> yeah. out anyway. <laughs> right. I think that Batgran also oh. uh, qualifies as spoopy. I would say so. She's a grandma, and I don't know if she's real or AI, but <laughs> she's a grandma with a knitted Batman costume. I almost hope that it's AI because mm -hmm. that, whether that's knitted or crocheted, that outfit would take forever. <laughs> yeah. As long as she's singing. Na 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 na. Batgran. <laughs> that's cute. Yeah. It is. Cute. And it, it works. It's spoopy. Yeah, it's very spoopy. I agree. And then, you know, there are degrees of spoopiness. There's oh, for sure. Too spoopy for me. Mm -hmm. There's three spoopy five me. <laughs> there's four spoop. There's there's five spoopy seven me. Uh huh. I think that's the highest degree of spoopiness. I think so. That you can get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think they do uh, five spoopy six, six, six me. Oh, right. So probably not. You know, yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. Five spoopy seven me. Hey, speaking of numbers like that, I we, we did have that many views on a YouTube video. Uh, this oh, past really? Week. And YouTube, we came to you a week ago saying we have 14 uh, followers left to get to 500. Uh -huh. About 10 minutes before we came on, I refreshed 499 followers. Oh, I was really hoping you were going to say 500. It gets better. What? Right before I hit record, I refreshed again. 498. Oh, <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah. Somebody actually checked us out more than just, because we keep it pretty clean, I think. I think so. Yeah. We try to be pretty kosher. On our reels. Yeah. Uh, but uh, <laughs> then they must have listened to a full episode and gone, oh, no. 
Right, he doesn't want to be affiliated with this. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> he probably would sound like a Ned Flanders. <laughs> oh, notally no. <laughs> <laughs> Not for me, neighborino. <laughs> oh, yodel nodal. <laughs> <laughs> Three spoopy, five me. <laughs> so let's get straight to it because um, mm-hmm. we're going to have a barely noticeably different mm-hmm. format tonight. And then we're going to do a couple of things and then try a Halloween snack and do a couple of... We got too many Halloween snacks. Well, we're kind of doing a, a candy thon here. Yeah. You know, because it is Halloween, mm-hmm. the time of treats and also trickery, but that's hard to do on camera. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're going to completely blow our diets mm-hmm. right here tonight. Yep. Just for you. So glad you're with us for this. <laughs> so we tried the recess beverages. Mm-hmm. Well, I got a 12 pack. Mm-hmm. And so after last week's show, probably while I was editing, I had I had one. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay, great, man, because they're tasty AF. They really are good tasting, and aren't they only like twenty calories? And I, by the way, I went back and watched our segment. I was like, we look like corporate shills. <laughs> we look like they paid us to do that. Yeah, we really do. Probably. <laughs> nope. Forty bucks a twelve pack on Amazon. <laughs> I wish they were paying us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, then I'm like, well, oh, so good, and there's only one left. I'll have the other one. Right. Um. Not to sound like a 15-year-old who crossed the border and tried a gummy for the first time, but right, right. I think I felt something. Okay, that's funny. Yeah. And if anything, you sound more like a 15-year-old who got into his mom's margarita mix, yeah. thinking it had alcohol when really it didn't. Bro, I think I'm buzzed. <laughs> Although I actually did notice once when I, so I tried a couple too, two in a row, and I did notice that it like... Zend me out just a little bit. Right. I didn't feel um, altered No, at all. No, it was kind of like a really nice cup of chamomile. Right. You know? Almost like there was, yeah, I was sipping a cup of chamomile. There was a cat on my lap. Mm -hmm. There was no cat on my lap. (laughs) And there was a friend in the room going, hey, I just want you to know you are loved (laughs) and you are doing a great job. Right, right. That transaction you brokered last week was... Airtight, my guy. People like you. <laughs> and and is it just me or are you losing a little bit of weight? <laughs> wow. That's a good friend. You know, you've got no worries <laughs> and things are great. We should all have a friend like Recess Pete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Recess mood adaptogen infused sparkling water. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, right. Which, um, could they make the name longer, you think? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> so we did a fun thing this past <laughs> week. We celebrated, we've been together for three years. We have. How crazy is that? So you got bikes. Do you want to tell the story of how you got these bikes? Yes, I do. (laughs) So I was on Facebook and I'd been kind of like perusing a couple of like uh, postings for bikes on the on Marketplace for a while now. But every time I found one that I liked, it was either too far away or just too expensive. Um, and I'd found a bike that I really loved at Walmart. It was a super cute little pink beach cruiser with a gray basket. You could go out and buy it today if you had 300 bucks, you know, <laughs> but I, <laughs> I didn't really want to spend 300 bucks on something that I didn't know I was going to I didn't know if I was going to use it enough to justify it, uh-huh. you know, so I was trying to find it used. Uh, finally, one day I open up my Facebook and I'm just like scrolling through and my my marketplace pops up with some like, you know, hey, you might be in- interested in this and that. I saw the bike. I clicked on it and it happened to be in town. I immediately messaged her and I was like, uh, hey, I see you've got it at 70. Would you take 50? And she was like, yep. And so the next day, I borrowed my dad's truck. I went over to their house. It was a really nice older couple. And this was the exact <laughs> pink bike that you had been eyeing at Walmart. at Walmart. The exact one. For like two years, I think. Yeah, it's been a hot minute. Yeah. Like, I've I've really wanted that bad boy for a, for a while now. Anyway, it was a super nice older couple who snowbirds down in Arizona. And so basically, they just haven't been using these bikes that they bought. And the gal even told me that Max, that, that bike probably only has like four miles on it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but her husband's like, hey, do you know a fella who might want a bike? And I was like, you mean like... A uh, two for one, and which he, uh, which I'm betting that's not what he meant. Maybe, but I'm bet again if they're snowbirds, <laughs> yeah, and they're here for the summers and then down to Arizona for the winter. Mm-hmm. Where where are they going to? Is yeah, it Arizona? Arizona. Okay, mm-hmm. they're in that special position in life where they'd rather <laughs> just get rid of it. Right, you're almost doing them a service yeah, by yeah. taking it off their hands. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. 
So anyway, I was like, like a two for one. And he's like, yeah, go ahead. And so they helped me load it in the truck and I drove away after paying just 50 bucks for two very nice bikes. That's pretty impressive. It was really impressive. And they've been super duper fun. So we were riding these bikes around the Snake River Greenbelt. Mm -hmm. I'm we've sorry, also, Madam Mayor, the river walk. <laughs> we've also ridden them around the Rose Hill Cemetery, which is such a fun, spoopy activity for the season. It was a little spoopy, wasn't yeah, it? It was cute. With Rango in your basket. Oh, it was great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we came across a guy. So, I mean, we're cruising uh -huh. as fast as I can cruise. So <laughs> probably five miles an hour getting winded. <laughs> and as we passed a couple of... A couple of dudes. Teenage boys? No, they no. look like young men. Okay. Yeah. Like I can never tell. Mid-20s. I don't know if you're 18 <laughs> or 28, you know? But um, he was like, hey, I like your podcast. <laughs> I genuinely nearly crashed because I just couldn't believe that he'd said that. Yeah. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so screech. Sorry, what? <laughs> I like your guys' podcast. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's so cool. What's your name? Jake. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening, Jake. Yeah. Thanks for watching. So now Jake is the third one. First, it was Tripodometer outside the pie yes, hole. Yes, uh huh. Then it was Ben with my friend Ben uh -huh, right. outside the Celt. Mm -hmm. And now Jake at the Green Belt. Uh huh. That's three people now. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I think it's, <laughs> I mean, you kind of can't miss us when we go out in public. I think so. I mean, there aren't that many gingers in town. Yeah. You, yeah. You what, know, and what, what you've got is a game show host <laughs> past his prime and a little orphan Annie looking. <laughs> You know? <laughs> I mean, I think that we do tend to, to <laughs> stick out a little. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Little Orphan Annie, <laughs> yeah. what do we have here? Well, I just liked that this particular dress matched my horns so well. Yeah, okay. So I was just going for like a little bit of a devil costume because you uh -huh. were saying that you wanted to do your brand new IFAF uh uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. That's right. Uh, we've mash been, up. We've been going with this motif for Halloween this year. There are only two people in the world that have this shirt. I know, and I'm not one of them. No. Yeah. The other one is Whitney Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? It's pretty cool, though. I it's, really like it. It just, for some reason, it just makes sense to have the Rocky oh. Mountain Horror Show. Absolutely. I'm sorry, the Rocky Horror Picture Show lips biting mm -hmm. with the IAF, IFAF Blood Ooh. dripping. Yeah, it's yeah. You're struggling there, I'm so buddy. excited. I can't even say it. <laughs> so, yeah I, yeah, I like your devil horns. Thank I like you. And, and there's more to this than is shown on the podcast. Is there oh, any yeah, way yeah, you, you can... Yeah, you want a little... Um, like, uh, yes. Yeah, little thigh action there. Got some fishnets <laughs> and some thigh-high boots. Really nice boots. Mm -hmm. I got these on sale at Dillard's. I liked them so much, I got them in three colors. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure you could shank somebody with those stilettos. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's pretty sharp. Yeah. These are... Um, so I actually have a pair of these in yellow that I wore for my Batgirl costume last year. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and at uh, Retro X, too. Uh, yes, that's right. Mistaken. I forgot that's about right. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We got you in the in the little box. The little right, right. Toy, in, <laughs> yeah, the action figure box. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of events are doing that. Yes. Have you noticed? Yeah, ever Just since Barbie. Just in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so thank you, Jake, on the Green Belt Riverwalk. Um, Greg said, hey, listening to your podcast now, I've been telling my parents that Idaho Falls needs some sort of belt route for years. Greg, you're mm -hmm. right. He said, it's not bad now, but it will be mm -hmm. when everything south of town to Shelley fills in, which it will. Right. Yeah. All you have to do is drive from Ogden to Provo Yeah. in Salt Lake City, and you'll see, yeah, you won't know if you're in Salt Lake mm -hmm. or Taylorsville or West Jordan or right. Sandy. I mean, you will, depending on what side of the freeway you're on. But he said, the perfect example of what happens if you don't have one, meaning a belt route, is Provo. It's a fine town. I enjoyed living there, but you've got the I-15, then no good roads to serve the entire town, which stretches from the freeway to the mountains, mm -hmm. mountains, <laughs> as they say in Utah. Getting east-west is a nightmare, just poorly laid out. They have to do this now, meaning our belt route now, instead and of something later. At least. Thanks for that, Greg. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's why I take so many side streets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to. Yep. It's not as bad as like ways in L.A., but close. Right, right. Jonathan Elkins wrote back and said, hey, guys, thanks so much for the love. He's oh, the nice. flamethrower pipe organ. Yes. Yeah, he was He was our IFAF. Was it last week or two last weeks week. ago? Yes, I love that. 
He said, I'm also working on getting back into college for an engineering degree, hoping the pipe organ can help me get some scholarships or grants. Nice. So let's get this. Is there anyone listening right now? Right. Who can help us find some scholarships or grants for this guy? Or you know what? Someone with some deep pockets who just wants to, you know, fund a scholar. This dude made a flamethrower pipe organ. I mean, that's pretty badass. It's if you patent don't... pending. Well, and also, all I'm going to say is, okay, we can either send him to college and have him use his skills for good, or we can let him descend into madness and use them for evil. He's probably going to, yeah. If really, he, it's for the good of the world. Right. We don't need an <laughs> evil genius. No. On that sign. <laughs> yeah, we need someone to help mentor him and hone his ability. Are you sure, yeah. Jonathan, you don't want to call it the not a flamethrower pipe organ? <laughs> JK. <laughs> right. <laughs> and finally, Maddie Danger. She heard us talking about her on the right. show and said, well, this was unexpected. <laughs> Maddie, come on. You're you're a huge local celebrity. And uh, I'm so glad. Like, I was able to recall your name having seen a couple of your YouTube videos a year ago. Right, right. But she's quite the character. She's go as Halloween. Mm -hmm. She's going as Jem. I know. And she looks so good. As in Jem and the Holograms. I can't believe how spot on she is. It's a bit of a departure. <laughs> well, yeah. Instead of black, she's pink. <laughs> she's wearing pink, right? Yeah. And here's something else, Maddie. Everywhere that she'd usually put black, she put pink. Even though I started <laughs> following you everywhere, I didn't see your outfit until I hit Imager. Right. It's it's an image sharing website mm -hmm. that I sometimes look at cat memes on. Yes. And somebody had taken your pictures and posted them there. Yeah. Yeah. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? Maddie Danger, you are IFAF this week. <laughs> I love it. Chris Pie 5. <laughs> Which... 21 finger gun salute Pew -pew. and chef's kiss to you and your baller Jim in the holograms costume. She's heading down south for some sort of... um goth fest or something this weekend <laughs> she's gonna stick out like a sore thumb wearing all that pink <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just kidding right, yeah. just kidding oh uh, any other goth girl follow-ups yes nora uh -huh. Hayes' mom commented <gasps> yeah i love that so much she said that's my girl <laughs> oh that's sweet you know i kind of feel like that's how it goes awesome. like i feel like the gothiest goths always have like really cool supportive parents <laughs> you sort of said that when we started we're on this goth girl trend now <laughs> like they're always the nicest people with the nicest families and i see your friends <laughs> with mm -hmm. other her sewing goth girl yes. liz uh -huh. on facebook now because I she am. came up in my suggested <laughs> friends i'm like okay facebook stop listening to us yeah right <laughs> but yeah kind of funny huh it's just been a very goth girl halloween it has been goth oh, girl spoopy season i love that <laughs> goth girl era yeah. <laughs> that's fun also idaho falls farmer's market we'll put this in the follow-up section <sighs> the last one of the year <clears throat> they pulled a sneaky what you trixie hobbitses <laughs> just before we got we hopped on these microphones they uh -huh. said surprise they're having a uh, downtown tree lighting and holiday market Saturday, November 23rd, 4 to 8 on Memorial Drive. Okay, I love that so much. Madam Mayor Rebecca Casper. I hope it's Casper not going to be freezing cold, though. We'll be there, yeah. It probably might be. <laughs> it might be. And a certain visitor from the North Pole. Oh, really? Yeah. Buddy the Elf. Art the Clown dressed as Santa Claus. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I saw enough of that, honestly. I think yeah. I'm good. I got my fill. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, though, that would be a nice little, like, like a little goth girl section. You know, like it's Art the Clown dressed as Santa instead of normal Santa for all mm -hmm. the goth girls to go to and enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yes, realistically, <laughs> considering that they're all cinnamon rolls, they'd probably prefer regular Santa. Yes. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, I, I wrote 500 subscribers. Nope, not yet. Mm. Wah, wah. I really thought by now we would be. Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> Should we dive into the snacks? Yeah, you know what? Let's Should get, we get one. get it started? That, that little, uh, you know, last point was kind of sour. Let's have some sweet. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> sour is good, too. Got <laughs> a thousand here. Sour punch. <laughs> Spooky straws. Right, which reminds me, by the way, I have some Sour Punch Pickle Roulette at home for us. So basically, you could either get a pickle-flavored one or you could get a like fruit-flavored one. No kidding. And I was kind of thinking we should uh, whip those out for the holiday party. <laughs> sort of like you remember Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Jelly Beans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of them were delicious and uh -huh. some of them were like earwax. earwax. Yes. Vomit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. grody. Super nasty. <laughs> All right, these, these flavors are... 
Let's see. Apple, grape, and tangerine. Ooh, yum. Ooh, I kind of want to try a tangerine. I'll give you one of each color. I'm betting okay. that's grape. This is probably grape. I'm betting that's apple. Probably. Here, I'm just going to help you peel it. And I'm betting that's tangerine. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here, can I give you the other one of these? Wee. Yeah. I feel like I want to start with tangerine and end with apple. Okay, let's be on. The, we'll be on the same page here. <laughs> Don't die on me. I got a little sour crystal in the back of my throat. One sec, I need to wash it down. This is gonna be. This is basically gonna be a holiday bunk bang. Tart. Mmm. Super mm. tart. It's good though. Abort. Abort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> it is making me cough because it hit me right in the back of the throat. What's after tangerine? I was thinking grape. 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 It's grape. <laughs> They're grape. Mmm. <laughs> Oh, you're eating the whole thing. You're so much faster than me. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just little sticks. They're not that bad. Mm -hmm. Grapes a little more tame. I really like... Oh, sorry. That was gross. I really like the tangerine. And these are <laughs> um, apple. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? It just keeps hitting me right in the back of my throat. Mm. That's what she said? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the apple are my favy. Mm. Well, an apple is such a Halloween flavor. Tangerine just smacks you in the Whoa. face. Tangerine is brutal. Mm -hmm. mm. Or the maybe. The grape is pretty tart too. I was expecting it to be a little sweeter. I was going to say maybe if, maybe they're just, there's a diminishing return mm -hmm. on the pucker factor. I mean, I did really like that tangerine though. Pup, 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 pucker face. You know? But I also really like orange flavored candies. So, okay. you know, maybe I'm a little uh, uh, biased. So Sour Punch, I don't know. Is this made by the makers of Sour Patch? Mm. I don't see anything Sour Patchy on there. Probably not. But then again, I don't know. I don't. I, wouldn't, I mean, I don't know who makes Sour It is kind punch. of the same font. Kind of, yeah. Uh, that was pretty delightful. Have you ever had, like, um, I know that once I just tried every spice in my mom's cabinet. Oh, I've done that. And she had cream of tartar. Mm -hmm. it was, I was just, can you imagine little eight-year-old mm -hmm. me going, no. <laughs> <laughs> this one time I was teaching a couple of little kids how to cook and we were making, I think, spaghetti. Uh -huh. And I just had a whole bunch of spices out and I was like, okay, guys, like, I'm just going to have you try a whole bunch of these so that you kind of get an idea of the flavor. So it makes more sense to smell them because they really taste more like they smell once they're in food. Yes. But if you know how they taste out of food, you can have a better idea too. So I just poured a little bit in their hands and we just went through the line. And they hated every single last one, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, the end of that story. tell me when you got to the cinnamon, you at least made them do like a whole teaspoon. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> cinnamon challenge. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, chip cookies in Ammon and Rexburg closed. Yeah, what a bummer. But if you think about it, like, I don't think, I mean, we can only have as many cookie joints as the market can bear. Right, right. Support. Yeah. We already well, have crumble. Who's going out for their daily cookie? Right. You know? Yeah. Like, that's a once in a while type of thing anyway. And realistically, people prefer ice cream. Especially right there, because we also mm -hmm. have nothing but cakes and then right. cocoa bean and then brolums. Uh, which and also, nothing crumble. but cakes is so damn good. So good. So damn good. <laughs> chip was just two doors down from them. Mm -hmm. We went there and had a Marco's pizza mm -hmm. chip night. Gosh, that was it. Brolums has cookies. <laughs> that was a good night, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. the cookie place. There's also mm -hmm. Mrs. Powell's that does right. them. And all the slurp and burps, the Mormon Starbucks, yes. the Big Swig, Fizz Biz, Hip Sip, Pop Shop, Thirst Bursts. Uh -huh. Those places. Don't they have cookies too? Tons of them do. Yeah. 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 Realistically, like individual cookie shops are kind of tricky. At that point, just have a bakery, my dude. Right. Yeah. Well, and we'll see how many. It was, it was sort of like the soda, soda shop, soda, soda. <laughs> oh, doing? you're really struggling, huh? <laughs> soda shop explosion. Yes. Uh huh. The soda tsunami, if you will. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, but at least with the soda tsunami stuff, like that's something that people go to daily. That's true. You know, back back when I worked in clinical research, constantly my office, someone would be like, "Hey guys, I'm gonna go to Thirst Burst. Anyone want something?" Yeah. Transparency fail. Let's talk about this. Oh, should we have candy first? Uh, yeah. You want to do another one? More Why not? candy. <laughs> I mean, especially because my hands are already sticky, which is 
bugging me so bad, by the way. I hate it's... sticky hands, too. That's one of my <laughs> least favorite things. Yeah. Also, it sounds like there are all of two dots in there. There are. These are dots. <laughs> these are the uh, the only time I ever see dots are at the movie theater. Oh, I only ever see them during Halloween. Although oh, okay. when I was a kid, my aunt really liked them, I guess. So my cousin always had a big old thing of fun sized dots okay. in the house. Uh -huh. And so, you know, anytime I was like, can I have some candy? She's like, yeah, you want some dots? <laughs> do these glow in the dark? I wonder if they do. It almost looks like they're supposed to. It's the glow in the dark color, but they are. So here's the gimmick they're dots, but as, and they're all, they're dots, <laughs> ghosts. Rango, don't eat that. I got it. Um, but so, but there's different flavors. There's strawberry, lemon, lime, cherry, and I don't know, grape. Uh huh. But you don't know which one you're going to get because they all look the same. The same. Okay. I kind of like that, though. That? That's fun. Yeah. Okay. Wanna... So we're basically playing dots roulette. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. I'll go first. Let's see if I can figure out which one it is. Okay. Hmm. You know, dots themselves have a very distinct taste. Mm. So you can't even hardly taste the fruitiness of it. That's definitely. I think this is lime. <laughs> also, these are so sticky. This is definitely fabuloso lemon. <laughs> right. I think it, that's what I got too. It tastes just like mm -hmm. it came from under the kitchen sink. <laughs> huh. It came from under the kitchen sink. <laughs> so was this one. Mm -hmm. It's calling from under the kitchen sink. To be fair, I feel like Dots always kind of tasted the same. What if they just packed one box full of the same flavor <laughs> just to f*** with you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Dots, though, aren't Dots and, like, Red Vines the best mm. at a movie theater? I mean, Red Vines. You've always got to get the popcorn and then something to get the kernels out of your teeth with, like mm. Dots mm -hmm. or Red Ooh. Vines. Milk duds. Mm, mm -hmm. That's mm. the way to go. Up. <laughs> oh, those ones I'm excited for. Also, I think I just got strawberry. Coming up, we have caramel apple sugar babies. So not mm -hmm. not quite milk duds. Pretty but hot sugar though. Babies. Let's get to this transparency Idaho I fail. I do love sugar daddies. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Well, little <laughs> orphan Annie Christ would love. I think she would. A daddy Warbucks. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> and this is on the war i guess <laughs> right yeah. and the bucks a d daddy warmonger <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> so last week there was a big news story hey idaho is now transparent and you can go and check out state and city employees salaries which frankly i think that was already a thing i think it was but now they're making a big deal out of it all right like and of course we're a little behind here in idaho transparency was a big word 10 years ago i would say so in uh, in that one word that we can't say, <laughs> yeah, you know, there's this big erection coming up. <laughs> yes. We can say that. Which is hilarious. And not get nerfed by YouTube and Facebook, but we can't say the other word. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's big, mm -hmm. it's an erection, and it's coming mm -hmm. <laughs> in a week and a day. Well, to be fair, the other thing is just so much more divisive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas that <laughs> like, divides something completely different. Like, don't show body parts on TV, <laughs> right. but all the killing you can handle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what would you do if you knew there was a website where you could go and see what city officials made and you hosted a podcast about <laughs> Idaho Falls? Well, I mean, I would go look for the biggest and baddest of the city officials and see what she makes. Rebecca Casper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> that and then I'd also look for who made the most out of everyone. Yeah. Because if it's not her, I want to know who it is. Well, then you're going to be interested twice. Okay. First of all, would you be interested to learn that Idaho Falls Mayor Rebecca Casper makes $48.08 a year? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, annually. Um, Does that sound weird to you? I doubt it. Sounds weird to us. Yeah. So I'm betting that it's $48.08 an hour. Right. That would make more sense. If you, so what, you factor. A lot um, more sense. Yeah. You figure two weeks of vacation. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stupid. $48 an hour turns out to be about a hundred grand a year. Which right. is about what I would think the mayor of Idaho Falls should make. Yeah. If not a little low, honestly. Yeah. I think that when you asked me this initially, I think I estimated that it was probably 150000 150 Yeah. 175 Somewhere in there. Two? Sure. Yeah. Anyway, so either Transparency Idaho screwed up, or I'm betting 
that they went to a bunch of cities in Idaho and said, send us your data right in the spreadsheet in this format. Mm-hmm. So I wonder who screwed that up. City of <laughs> Idaho Falls. <laughs> Makes you wonder. Either that or maybe... She's just donating most of her salary, (laughs) and that's the amount she can, like, she has to take that home. Like, she's taking home a dollar a paycheck. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So then the second interesting thing is she isn't the highest paid city employee. Okay. And at first I was shocked. Shocked, I tells (laughs) you. Who's more important than the mayor? Well, come to find out a lot of people. (laughs) Oh. Especially um, if you've got, like, an electrical degree. Right. People in charge of like electricity. Yeah. And who are in administration. Uh-huh. Even parks administration. Even the even the administrator of our golf courses locally uh-huh. makes more than the mayor. Right. Well, and that does kind of make some sense because at least with like the city planning and stuff like that, like there are parts where like if the infrastructure fails in some way, lives are on the line. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So that person really should be making a good amount of money. And realistically, they probably had to do a whole hell of a lot of schooling to even get the position. Right. Highly, highly specialized positions. Right. Yeah. Um, the even police positions, the city attorney. Mm-hmm. Oh, who makes the least? Who? Members of the city council. Oh. I don't even think they make seven twenty five an hour. According mm-hmm. to the Transparency Idaho website. Lincoln Post. Yeah. Do you want locally raised beef for the holidays or to feed your family through the winter? Right now, Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company is offering 25-pound butcher boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. You can have your very own farm-to-table experience. Find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. And listen later in this episode for how to win front row tickets to a Spud Kings hockey game. You deserve the best when it comes to treating yourself. You deserve Thor's chocolate. The best artisan chocolate in East Idaho, beyond anything you've tasted before. With bold, smooth, delicious flavors, dark milk and white chocolates, with a few keto-friendly options as well. Made from bean to the bar in Idaho Falls, Thor'sChocolate.com. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 25% on your first purchase. Thor's Chocolate, fit for the gods. Go thrifting this fall at Elsie's Closet, upscale resale. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Free haunting with every purchase, too. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Right now, save on fabulous fall fashions, including sweaters, cardigans, boots, and sneakers. Elsie's Closet, look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. New customers use promo code IFAF to save 15% on your first purchase. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. We all have different roles, don't we? At home, at work, at play. By night, we are podcasters who make silly jokes. By day, we help Idaho buy and sell homes. When it's time to make your move, we can help you too. We know Idaho Falls and we know the current real estate market. Plus, we're backed and brokered by Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. Dead serious realtors by day, alive silly podcasters by night. Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. Link and post. Who would you rather rely on for your Idaho Falls Fiber Internet services? An out-of-state company or the one local choice, QuickNet? Right now, get QuickNet's Crazy Fast 250 service for $37 a month or their Crazy Fast Gig service for $49 a month. Unlimited data, no setup fee, no term contract, net neutrality, and hometown friendly support. For Idaho Falls Fiber, choose QuickNet. New customers use code IFAF to save 15% on your first three months. Get a jump on holiday shopping for your out of town family or friends. Here's a gift giving idea send them a unique homegrown hometown tea from Teton T shirts. Including these cool vintage versions of the Civic Auditorium, the West Bank, and the Water Tower our famous potato sack design, and the classic IHAR IFT. Check out Teton t-shirts. These exclusive designs are not available in gift shops. TetonT-shirts.com, Lincoln Post, where a real piece of Idaho Falls. Oh, it's happening. Idaho Falls, IFAF. Oh, yeah. The in town. That's right, bitches. For the in town. That's the in town. IFAF. The town we're in. Idaho, 
that happened. Uh, that deserves some jazz hands at the end. I completely agree. Maybe even some spirit fingers. And other 2000s <laughs> sitcom expressions. <laughs> right? <laughs> So, yeah, we got some jingles. Uh, and they sound so incredible. <laughs> They're so 60s. They are. I just dig them. Sounds pretty Jetsons-y, doesn't it? It really does. <laughs> yeah, like genuinely, the fact that we don't have like futuristic rings around our clothes is mm-hmm. insane to me. That's too bad. Flying cars. Yeah, uh-huh. something. Some cool mod prints. Jane, stop this crazy thing. <laughs> Another snacky. Let's do it. Caramel <laughs> apple sugar babies. See, this one I love because it's going to make talking so difficult. Really, we probably would should have saved one of these for the end. But uh, <laughs> right. here you go. Oh, I'm so excited. I like the green color. Very witchy. Uh-huh. Like, this looks like witch, witch skin. Okay. You know? Yeah, a little cauldron um, yeah. nugget. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that is heaven. First thing that hits you. Mm-hmm. It's sort of a sour apple. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming that's the shell. Mm-hmm. Oh, but that little bit of caramel nugget in the middle. Mm. Oh, that's good. It's really... Well, and I like that it's not super... Like, it, it doesn't get stuck in your teeth like the dots did. I wasn't so prepared mm-hmm. for the sour green apple. Mm-hmm. Or Granny Smith. But hot dig to dog is that good. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Let's say goodbye to two things, and I'm sad about both of them. Okay. First of all, number 399. Mm, I know, that was sad. Bear number 399 in Grand Teton National Park, Mm -hmm. hit by a car. She was significant because she had been around for 28 years. Wow. She was still making babies. That's kind of an old bear. Uh Uh-huh. Do we know how old bears live? I don't know what the average life expectancy is. You want to Google that? And she's a grizzly, right? And as of press time, yeah, grizzly bear. As of press time, she did have a cub this year. We haven't seen it. Oh, no. They're, well, they're saying be hopeful. Prospects are good. We'll keep you posted. Okay. And um, you might be happy to know that the driver of the car that hit the, and killed the bear is mm-hmm. okay. That is good. Uh, here's something interesting. Huh. So the average grizzly lifespan in Idaho is around 25 years. So, yeah, she was so somebody she hit a, a grandma. Little, she, well, a uh, grandma mom. Yeah. <laughs> Grandmom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. I'm kind of surprised that she's still making babies. You'd think she'd go through bare menopause or something. I'm surprised that she wasn't knitting a Batman costume. Yeah, yeah right? About time. <laughs> we also found out this week that, because I guess I haven't driven the Northgate Mile in the last mm-hmm. um, month, mm-hmm. they took down the Farrell's baby. I know. How messed up is that? Yeah, it's gone. I mean, I kind of get it. Because, like, who wants to be mooned every time they drive down the road? <laughs> well, right. And it was one of those sort of, you remember the copper tone baby? Right, right. It sort of, I think, has fallen out of fashion to display. Baby butts. Even a cartoonized version. Yeah. But I think it's cute. It is cute. I think it's so cute. But then some people ruined it. That we actually uh, made a copy of it. <laughs> And it's available at tetontshirts.com, plug, plug. It is a super cute shirt. It's so cute. And I will say, it's such a it's such an iconic piece of Idaho Falls. Exactly. You know? And, you know, I mean, as we're, uh, as these things are sort of going away, mm-hmm. the wa- not the least of which is the water tower. <laughs> right. The Pharaoh's baby butt sign. Mm-hmm. The Civic Auditorium facade will look completely different in another couple of years. Isn't it crazy? But, yeah, you can find those sort of retro shirts mm-hmm. at tetontshirts.com. Yeah. Have you heard about the Idaho State uh, real estate agent who is offering free listings to liberals leaving the state? I have heard about <laughs> it. Yep. I think the name <laughs> either of the brokerage or the the firm, the company inside the brokerage is Idaho Wild. Okay. And they're saying, yeah, we're here to help you return to your safe spaces. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, it kind of sounds you like... You funny guy! I mean, I will just say it kind of sounds like they're trying to create their own safe space. Kind of. You know? You know. Getting rid of people who differ opinions. Yeah. And it, <laughs> now, what what I have heard, you know, okay, I've heard some, some just bizarrely anti-real estate agent people. Right. And I, I believe they're a bit misguided. Mm-hmm. You can't blame the facilitator. First of all, it's a free country. People are going to move to where they move. Right. Just like if they don't like it, they'll leave like this agent is counting on. Yeah. 
But that's, you know. Well, but also, uh, one reason I don't really like it is because I feel like he's shooting himself in the foot. Right, well, sure. You know, because then he's working with the people he likes the least and not even getting paid for it. Right. But. <laughs> like, that just sounds like hell on earth to me. <laughs> it's a great stunt. And we love smart asses on the internet. Yeah. Here it on is IFAF. <laughs> yeah. Got to hand it to him, right? We're, right. Here we are talking about him across True. the state. True. Yeah. Oh, uh, was Striper in town? Oh, yeah, I heard they were. Christian rock band Striper <laughs> was in right. town at the Mountain America Center mm -hmm. last week, and we missed it. Yeah. I wouldn't say we were missing it, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, it just blows me away that we're, we've <laughs> talked about Striper twice now on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Which is, if you ever asked me how many times I thought we would talk about Striper on this show in the first year and a half, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been twice. <laughs> Yeah, clearly I, six times at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think it would even be once. <laughs> Still going. For I know. 40th year, I want to say. Wow. Wasn't their 30th? Yeah, I think it was their 40th that's year. A, that's a long, long, long time. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was one of, I think we've talked about that. That was one of the um, sort of church approved bands I could listen to. Right, right. <laughs> that and Hooked on Classics. I don't know if anybody mm -hmm. remembers that, but it was classical music to a disco beat. Oh. Lewis, what was his name? Aren't they the band that did the, uh, it's like a Beethoven song that they used for that roller disco scene from Family Guy? That was Walter Murphy. Okay. It was a I 70s was disco so hit called A Fifth of Beethoven. Yes, right. Here's where it gets crazy. Seth MacFarlane loved that so much, he went to Walter Murphy, who's still alive, oh, and really? said, would you like to do the music for Family Guy? <laughs> And okay, that's kind of cool. So they have the episode playing on the screen with Walter Murphy and his orchestra, and they do the music live. Okay, that's pretty cool, actually. It's pretty cool like, the way they really do it. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, not only do I like classical music, I also like Family Guy. <laughs> yes, you do. All right. Well, and honestly, it sounds like you and Seth MacFarlane would, would get along great. So. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, oh, and speaking of which, we haven't mentioned this. Let's get a shot of, here we are, speaking of Family Guy, <laughs> as Peter and Lois mm -hmm. at the Halloween party that we attended. Yes. Technically, you're seeing these a little bit early, um, especially because we're going to be wearing the same costumes again since they are our official Halloween costumes for our very first Halloween live show. So we're going to try. We're, we're going to try. We're <laughs> going to try to go live. Do or do not. There is no try. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thanks, Yoda. <laughs> we're going to try to go live. On Halloween on either Facebook or YouTube or hopefully both. Uh-huh. I feel like 9 o'clock is the time when the doorbell is almost guaranteed to have stopped ringing. Right, right. Good point. So should we say 9? Let's say 9. Okay. 8.59, 9.01, somewhere in there? Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> and I do have uh, two impressions all teed up <laughs> for, the, um, for the party. Nice. As Peter Griffin. The first one is, Lois? <laughs> I can't do more than that. I think it's pretty good. That's all I got. I can do one or two word impressions. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. And here's my other impression. Shut up, Meg. <laughs> I can that's do all I got. I can do exactly one. Okay. Pete, I get in the car. That's it. That's all I got. That is great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You really just don't use your nose at all. <laughs> you are Alec Borstining it up right there. Yes. Or thank Steen. you. <laughs> How are Frankenstein. <laughs> Sorry. We did just watch Young Frankenstein. We did. We did. It was Frankenstein. Really fun. <laughs> okay. Can you drink 32 ounces of eggnog and run a mile? No, I can't. I can't do either of those, let alone together. <laughs> it's back. I mean, I think that this costume is very appropriate to talk about this uh -huh. with because uh -huh. I think the only person who- Because this event is brought to you by Satan? Yes. <laughs> yes. This is a sadist dream, mm. you know? Like, realistically, if someone's got that kink, if they can be the one sitting at the counter giving you the eggnog, oh my gosh, they're going to be rock hard under, under that table all night. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing maniacally. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you drink 32 ounces of eggnog, you run a mile, it's the Nogathon back for the second year. Just nuts to me, dude. I kind of can't believe that last year wasn't so horrible that it was just one and done and they canceled it. We've talked about how Idaho has a lot of first year events and not so many second year events. <laughs> yes, yeah. 
Like, what was that? There was a big sort of farmer's market alternative oh, last summer. The Falls Market. That we heard about a lot and mm-hmm. then haven't heard from since. Yeah, you know, right. That kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised we're in our second year of podcasting. <laughs> right, right. To be honest with you. Well, I mean, to be fair, now we've sort of set ourselves up for that with this being our first annual Halloween live show. Yeah. You know? I mean, I guess we won't necessarily always go live on Halloween because sometimes we want to be out enjoying it if it's on a weekend. I think Halloween, just you sort of minimize the expectations, and that's why we're doing it. We've talked about if we did it a, a live show. Since our published show comes out on Monday, we do the live show on a Thursday. Right. Kind of. Yeah. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, um, the Nogathon is back, yeah. Uh, Saturday, November 9th, 2 p.m., McCowan Park. I will say I'm not exactly sure who it's benefiting, but spectators are asked to bring an unwrapped uh, new toy, a winter clothing item, or non-perishable foods. So my guess would be the community food basket, toys for tots, and the wall of warmth. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. And... Then they get like a Neater's oh, yeah. certificate, don't they? Or yes. something like that? They get a Neater's French toast card, which actually sounds real good. Yummy. I do like French toast. Mm-hmm. I also like Belgian toast. I like all of the European toasts. Just kidding. <laughs> the Belgian waffles with the Belgian <gasps> pearl sugar Those inside. Those things are amazing. That <sighs> Diablo's Kitchen introduced us to before I they had to go Diablo's. away. You do. <laughs> I do. You know, the worst part is that that West Bank restaurant is still open there's no one in it so was it even worth it was it even worth it to ruin all of our lives yeah and that's why people hate landlords i hope you (laughs) feel good about yourself (laughs) should we move on to another uh oh let's try these pumpkin spice oreos can we i love it yes please it's a halloween candy halloween treat blowout right my goodness (laughs) and really hard to get open you get to hear all the crinkling oh Uh, a little certain someone you got rango's attention Yep. Carly's Chihuahua is, uh, yeah. Oh, those smell like a Yankee candle. Gosh, golly goodness, those sure do smell good. These smell like your mom's house. They do. Yeah. Honestly, man, they really do. (laughs) That's not like an insult or anything. No, they smell amazing. Carly's mom has always got the, uh, those like really nice little plugins or the the wax warmer going. That's Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It smells like a homey hearth Mm -hmm. or a hearthy home. In the fall. <laughs> um, those are fantastic. It's like a, it's like a pumpkin pie, but with m- vanilla ice cream on top. You know, like it's got a, it's got a little bit more vanilla than a regular pumpkin pie would. And man, it sure is good. <laughs> I'm not huge into pumpkin spice. Like I passed on the mm-hmm. pumpkin spice premier protein at Sam's Club <laughs> last night when we were there. I get it. But mm. mm-hmm. these are good. Here, why don't you give Bean Boy a half of a cookie? Here, buddy. Oh, yeah, a, there just you a go. tiny bit is perfect. He gets a lot of table scraps. It gives him really bad hearts. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> pepperoni Pumpkin spice dog fart. <laughs> yeah. Pumpkin pepperoni dog fart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> God. You know what's funny, okay. though? Uh, when his butthole is out of whack, the mm. thing that helps is pumpkin. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, oh, right. you, should feed your, you should feed your pet pumpkin if they're either um, diarrheal or if, they are, uh, if, they, if they're constipated. I get constipated because... Mm-hmm. It's got lots of fiber. Right. Mm-hmm. But doggy diarrhea, mm-hmm. why would you... It just helps their gut health, I guess. Okay. Well, and to be fair, I always mix it with plain white rice. This has been so maybe it's the white rice that helps. Surprise puppy butt talk <laughs> with Mike and Carly. You never know when it's going to strike. I just love me a critter. All right, it's time to get into that drawing. Uh huh. For two, two front row tickets to the Spud Kings game November eighth at the mm-hmm. Mountain America Center. Best part is you get to be the middle of a Virgin River and IFAF sandwich. Hmm. It's going to be fun. We're calling it the Sando. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> one person, Whitney, is calling it that. <laughs> We've had a few entries, uh-huh. but we want to be Transparency Idaho with you and uh-huh. say, look, we're a small podcast just beginning. Uh-huh. We don't have hundreds of entries. Yeah. You have a really good chance of winning if you enter even once, dude. So this is your chance to sit front row, not just front row, behind the goal. Yes. Believe me, at least once. And I'm guessing low. You'll see a hockey player's face slammed into the plexiglass 
less than a foot away from your face if you're leaning forward. It's pretty cool. It's awesome. And you know what? You don't even have to like us to enter. No. You don't have to talk to us if you don't want to. We are just giving you... Strings free tickets. We're situationally aware, and so and yeah. so are Lane and Whitney. Yeah. If you just want to show up and go, where's my seats? Yep, we're totally cool with that. <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll still liking us or uh, you liking us, us liking mm-hmm. you, not a, a prerequisite. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you dislike us, this is a really good chance for you to be able to say it to our face. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So here's what you do. Email this week's to get into the drawing. Mm -hmm. Email this week's code word to info at ifafpod.com. That's the only way to reliably get a hold of us. Mm -hmm. Info at ifafpod.com. You can also uh, listen to last week's episode, 64, Mm -hmm. and next week's episode, 66. I love it. Now, next week, you're only going to have a day Mm -hmm. because the deadline will be next Monday night. At 11.59 p.m. Right. Okay. Because then we uh, announce the winner, pick the winner next Tuesday. Wow. November 5th, election day. I know. Isn't that crazy? <sighs> That's happening fast. So you actually have something to look forward to. You're welcome. <laughs> so Carly Morgan, what is this week's Virgin River Front Row Spud King's ticket code word? Well, Mike, this week, our code word is ribeye. That's R-I-B-E-Y-E. Okay. Baby. <laughs> Ribeye. Um, also, I just had a really fun way of how we should choose the ultimate winner. Huh. So for each code word, code word, we should do a raffle of those names. Pull one out. So we'll have three at the end. And then I say we write them on cards, put them on the ground, and Rango chooses. Oh, yeah. Which one he poops on. Yeah. I think that'd be cute. <laughs> <laughs> we'll feed him lots of pumpkin. Yes. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. It's time for... I-F-A-S. Oops. I <laughs> The wrong button. It's but it time for the really good. The Rocky Mountain Horror Show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Three spoopy, five me. <laughs> okay. Since we did go a little hard last week, I think it's kind of nice to bring up some of the things for the kitties this week. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the trunk or treats have already happened because um shockingly, when Halloween falls on a Thursday. A lot of the time, they do all of the fun stuff the weekend before. (laughs) That sort of answers our question. What does East Idaho do when Halloween falls on a Thursday? A lot of the events happen the prior Friday and Saturday. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, but I, there, think I, w- I would like to hope that actual trick-or-treating will still happen oh yeah. this Thursday. There's got to be, right? Uh, but the nice thing is there are still some trunk-or-treats going on. Uh, I actually went to the Chamber of Commerce one last week. They were giving out uh, free hip sips, and they were delicious. That okay. was super nice. By the... New Park yeah. by Winco on Easy Street. <laughs> yes, that's the one. Yeah. Did, did you know we had one of those here in Idaho Falls? <laughs> kind of funny, right? And Easy Street. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is easy to get to Winco from that street. A- and is um <laughs> is the park like there? There's a very nice field. We seem to be having grand opening for fields a lot lately. Yeah, right? And um, I can see it in my mind, Clark, and it's breathtaking, but... Mm-hmm. Maybe we should wait till we get some, I don't know, sod laid down or something. Well, I mean, there's grass. It's it's a very nice field. Okay. You know, and pretty soon I'm sure they'll have playground equipment. Right. To be fair, it's laid enough in the season. It almost feels like a slap in the face to put the playground equipment in now. Right. Because then it's just going to sit there all winter. Like getting a bike for Christmas. Right. <laughs> in Idaho. Yeah. What are you going to do? Drive it in the slush? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's your trampoline, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dad, I can't wait four months before I can finally jump on it in the cold. We got you a snorkel <laughs> and some fins for Christmas, buddy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it was super fun. The kids that I took had a great time. Um, and I did like that they had the hip sip at the end. I thought mm-hmm. that was really cool. And they had a bounce house, too. So what do we got coming up? So what we've got coming up, we've this got, week. I've got three right here on my radar. If you hear of any more, please feel free to mention them in the comments. I'm sure folks would love to hear about them. Uh, but there's a big deal outlet trunk or treat, uh, obviously going on outside big deal outlet. That's going to be on the 29th. That's and, the one on Woodruff. Yes. And that's going to be from five to seven. Okay. And we'll have a link to these in our post too. Right. And then it looks like there's also one on October 30th. Uh, and one on October 31st. The one on October 30th is, let's see here, on Curlew Drive. It's at 1619 Curlew Drive from 5 to 6. So a little earlier in the day, which is nice. And it looks like it's Acorn Academy and RHS. Super cute. 
And let's see. Curly here. Drive. That's the one that actually got us extended on First Street. Yes. To sort of roundabout to John Adams mm-hmm. because First and Hit is sort of closed right now. Right. Or at least heading east is closed to widen that bridge, which is a pain in my ass. <laughs> But yeah, we'll get I know over it. you go you go that way a lot. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's actually right by Sonic. Okay, over there too. All right, so helps. it's on the other side. It's past Walmart and Ammon. Yes, got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other one I'm seeing is a trunk or treat at Ridgeline Medical that is going to be on the 31st at 4:30 p.m. So I mean, if they're going to do it on Halloween, they better have some damn good candy. You know, it was. It's so funny that trunk or treats are now nationwide, right? Because 15 years ago they weren't. Oh, I know. And I tried to explain that to new people in a new city when I left Salt Lake City and and went to Milwaukee for three years. Mm -hmm. And they just sort of looked at me like, (laughs) you want strangers around kids with their trunks open? I mean, (laughs) you literally want kids being offered candy from a stranger's car. (laughs) With their trunk open. That's the part they couldn't get over. Right. It was kind of hard to explain that to them, but it was also very... um, validating to have them call me out of the blue like 10 years later and go, okay, we get it now. Right. It's so much more. Sorry. You were so far ahead of your time. (laughs) Yeah. You know what? That's probably just such a good feeling. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But that's over on 2470 Jaffer street, Jaffer circle, Jaffer. What's CT again? Jafar. Court. Court. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) I'm having a really good brain day. (laughs) I've been sleeping so well lately, and you Uh, can totally tell. (laughs) It's because you're taking care of that mouse. He's little. Carly is literally (laughs) nursing a rodent. (laughs) So a friend of mine found a baby mouse in the ceiling light of her car, like literally in the plastic part. His little feet were sitting there, and so they popped it out. He's just a tiny little thing. I'm pretty sure he was only like... Two or three days old when I got you didn't him. Tell me this. Yeah. In the ceiling light of her in car. Ce- I have a picture of it. I will I'll send it to you. She, you can put it up right now. She <laughs> she gets into her car, the yes. lights turn on. Before and, she slams the door, she looks up and sees She sees something blocking her light and she's like, What is that? She realizes it's a baby mouse. This yeah. story just keeps getting weirder <laughs> right. and weirder. Well, and so she posts on Facebook like, hey, does anyone know how to take care of a baby mouse? Like, I feel bad hurting it and it's just so little and cute. Like, I don't want it to die. And so here's the funny thing. Like six years ago, I hand raised five baby mice uh, because my aunt found them in her house. They were all just little tiny pinkies. We couldn't find the mom. Uh, like she pulled out an appliance to switch it out and there was like a little, there was a litter there. Mm-hmm. Um We couldn't find mom, so I ended up hand-raising those five to adulthood. None of them died. I was actually really impressed, but they were assholes, so I did have to release them. But the way I look at it is at least I gave them a fighting chance and let them grow up before. Carly literally (laughs) has a um, dropper. That she that she puts Pedialyte in. It's a so you have to feed him with a paintbrush because he's so little. Okay. Yeah. Paintbrush <laughs> with Pedialyte. She's painting his mouth with Pedialyte and kitten milk. It's kitten formula, oh. kitten formula mixed with Pedialyte, and then a heating pad. Uh huh. <laughs> when she's not feeding it. Yeah. It's it's bizarre. He's really sweet though, and he loves to sit in my hand and sleep. He's a really good little baby. Sorry. Well, okay, you remember when I was sick in January? I think it was. Yeah. There's a, there was an episode in January uh-huh. where I was just like, Carly is the most caring person <laughs> ever, and and I really meant that. You are just when you see a sick animal. In the last January, it was me. <laughs> right. You really, you you do, you take care of it. And they're just little. They're well, now so we've kind of blown the whole. Um, <laughs> Not very horrifying. Spo- yeah. Let's get <laughs> back to the spooky stuff. I got something spooky for you. Snacks first? Yes, snacks first. Okay, this like is. Snacks first. <laughs> this is one of my favorites, and I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I, we did this last year, didn't we? I think we did. And it's also one of my favorites. Okay. Here we go. Uh-huh. And you'll notice the, these are Brock's candy corns. Mm-hmm. B-R-A-C-H-S, and Planters Dry Roasted Peanuts. Mm -hmm. They have to be these two things. Right. Don't settle for less. (laughs) Well, and isn't Brock's the one that uses real honey? I don't know. I don't know either, but... You can look at the ingredients. You know, I'm I'm just going to say it. Huh. I kind of think candy corn gets a bad rap. I do too. I don't love it. Every year you see those people bitching about the waxy crayonness of candy corn. Right, right. Which, first off, I actually kind of enjoy (laughs) <laughs> well, and and you're going to talk about that, but not talk about those grandma 
peanut butter and uh, black and orange wrapped. Oh, those things are horrible. <laughs> whatever those things are. Yeah. And circus peanuts. Yeah, right. You don't have a problem with those? Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think that most people just tend to eat old, gross, stale candy corn, and that's why they don't they don't like it. Right. But the fresh stuff? Oh, the fresh stuff. That's nice. I think it's so good. So fresh. I mean, is it the most amazing Certified candy? Certified fresh. No, it's not the most amazing candy, but is it the worst? Here we have the Absolutely handful not. of... Yeah. We have the handful of candy corn. You mix it with some peanuts. If you haven't tried this, I'm sure a lot of you are saying, yeah, we know, Mike. Mm-hmm. This is my first one of the season. You can't stop. Mm -hmm. This moment right here <laughs> is when my diet goes out the window for the entire rest of the year, for the holidays it's and so everything. It's so hard for it not to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bean Boy can have that. He loves those. Go, he likes peanuts. Mm. So when you combine these two things, what you get is basically a salted nut roll. Yeah. Which personally... Is one of my favorite candy bars. It might even be my favorite candy bar. It's just so good. It's got that salty, sweet creaminess. And it kind of reminds me of my dad. Yeah? Yeah. He'd always eat those and he'd always buy them for me and stuff. Okay. So yeah, I, I always think of my dad when I think of salt. That and also his car always smelled like peanuts because he'd, like, that's all he ate. <laughs> sort of like the other day, um, I got a bottle of Dial Gold soap. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of my grandparents' house. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's sweet. Mm hmm. Mm. Well, now that I'm done scarfing down a bunch of food, why don't I tell you about our fourth and final spooky local legend. Okay. We're going to be talking today about the one and only Crowley House. Now, the youths of today don't get to experience this because it has since been demolished. Oh. Yeah. But it's a house. Well, it was a house over on 49th Street. Um, I want to say it was demolished within like the last 10 or 15 years. I actually think I may have been there once, but I don't know for sure if it was it or not. 49th South or no, 49th East, I'm betting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey. Yeah, way out there. Uh -huh. um, but anyway. Toward the foothills. It's not so way out there anymore. Now yeah, that not Thunder anymore. Ridge is there <laughs> and all the foothill neighborhoods. Right, right. But I know that the year, if I went, if it's the one I'm thinking of, and I have to ask my friend Adam if that is where we took that photo shoot that one time, um, if that's the house. But when we went there, it felt like it was the middle of nowhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was this creepy old abandoned house that still had a bunch of the furniture inside. It was <laughs> vandalized by a bunch of teenagers, of course. So that sort of added to the spookiness. But, like, it had bed frames in it and um, at, at, and photos and things like that. There are two main stories around this house. I found a, a Facebook thread talking about it where someone commented underneath saying that their dad was the one who owned, well, their parents owned this property and their dad had it torn down to help deter uh, Satan worshiping that was happening in the home. Oh, wow. <laughs> Spooky and fun. <laughs> that was also the rumor about the O.E. Bell building. Yes, across right. Across from the Museum of Idaho and Trinity United Methodist Church. Right. But I do think it's kind of cool that they're very specifically, like, someone so close is saying that that's why it came down. You know, also great to know I have fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's stupid. <laughs> anyway, the story around this house goes... Could be the next Maddie Danger. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so the story around this house basically tends to go one of two ways, depending on who you're hearing it from. But the two main versions that I've heard are um, the main one being that the dad hung himself in the garage and the family packed up and left. That's the less exciting one. Um, but the more in-depth version is that... Yeah, dad hung himself. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad, but I mean... Yeah. yeah, this one is more uh -huh. enticing. Okay. But basically the big story I heard is that it was a nuclear family of like two kids, mom, dad, and the kids were crossing the road while they were playing in the front yard. Apparently it's hard to see the road from the hill because the, ha the house kind of sits on top. So they were crossing the road and a motorist didn't see the kids and oh, killed oh. them. And Pet cemetery those gauges? Yeah. Oh, yep. That's sad. Yeah. And then about a if year. If it's true. Yeah. And then a year later, the mother, still in mourning, decided to join them. Uh, and then the dad, having lost everyone, hung himself in the garage. That is a compelling story. Very. Yeah. And sort of the sightings that people claim to see. Um, so even with the house gone, people claim to see like lights where windows would be. They claim to see kids that will uh, 
appear randomly and then if they are in the road and you're in your car they'll vanish right before your car hits them which thank goodness because terrifying yeah right <laughs> like i don't want to think i hit a kid you know like that's that's such a dick move of a ghost to do right. <laughs> you know like don't make me stop outside your haunted house to make sure that i didn't murder anyone on accident you know what's worse than kids <laughs> is ghost kids yeah those little brats <laughs> <laughs> and then some have also said back when there was a garage structure that if you looked in there at night, you'd see the dad's body hanging, which could have just been a trick of the light. S- some say. of these are sounding familiar, though, like, right. you know, having grown up here myself as well. Mm-hmm. It's it's like, yeah, I seem to, you know, I, I, I joked with a friend the other day that I've already forgotten mm-hmm. some stuff <laughs> that I know I knew. Right. Once right. upon a time. Mm hmm. And this may be one of those things. Yeah. I, we do have a habit of mentioning things like this on the show and getting comments like, oh, yeah, dude, that totally happened. Go check out blank. Right. So right. if you know what we're talking about or can offer any more. Yeah. And you know what? If you've got story. a personal story of yourself at Crowley House, please leave it in the comments. I had such a hard time getting personal stories. Every time I went to someone and like had questions and was trying to get more information, I never heard back from anyone and it was awful. <laughs> so just a ton of dead ends. Uh, you might even say that I was ghosted. <laughs> <laughs> it's super dumb. But, you know, anyway, <laughs> if you happen to hear this podcast and you want to help me tie up some of these loose ends, I would really appreciate it because I'm a nosy mofo and I want to know what's going on. So we have a clear winner for our Halloween treats. <laughs> right. I mean, we weren't necessarily judging them against each other, but it was just so obvious that, yeah. It's the caramel apple sugar babies. They were just so good. And they didn't get stuck in your teeth like the dots and the flavor was there. Mm-hmm. They were the perfect mix of sour and sweet, too. Don't know where you're going to be able to find these. I mean, yeah, especially since they've cleared out all of, the, all of the Halloween stuff everywhere already. I went in just the other day to buy a couple more Halloween decorations. It's all Christmas now. I'm pissed. Yeah, already. <laughs> I'm pissed. I'm so mad. Might try love at first bite <laughs> yeah. for these. Might be able to find them there. I mean, they do have a little bit of everything, so I think so. We will, like we said, try to do a live show on either Facebook or YouTube, if we're lucky, both, Mm -hmm. on Halloween night. We're going to give it a try, see how it goes. In the meantime, we're going to leave you with, remember our buddy Austin Allen? As we were doing this show, he sent me a message. I assume it's, remember his yard from last year? Oh, yeah, I do. I'm thinking that it's a video of his yard this year. Oh, I hope so. I would love to see it. So that's what we're going to leave you with. Austin Allen's yard. We'll put the address in the comments, too. Nice, so you can go visit. Happy Halloween. See it either on Thursday Halloween or next Monday, and stay fresh cheese bags. Cheese bags.